Okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, limiting and excess reactants and how that works with stoichiometry. Really, this is just another stoichiometry problem. We're just adding another little wrinkle into it like we did with the percent yield. Remember that when we calculate things on paper, do stoichiometry problems on paper using a BCA table, uh, the amount of product that gets formed is the theoretical yield. Okay. So we're just looking at doing another variation of that. The difference is when we start talking about limiting and excess reactants, we're going to be working with problems in which we have uh, multiple values with which we can start. So chemical reality. On paper, it is easy to calculate the amount of something produced or find the amount of reactants used up. However, in reality, a chemist must look at how much of each reactant they are using before they predict how much product is going to be generated. So here we have an example problem that we're going to work with while we talk about this limiting versus excess reactants. Uh, this is a reaction that we saw during the types of reactions lab where we combine 10 grams of silver nitrate with 10 grams of copper in a beaker with an unimportant amount of water. So this was the single replacement reaction of silver nitrate with copper metal where the uh, copper replaces silver and they end up with copper nitrate, so the solution turned kind of blue in color, and then we had silver metal being produced. So uh, the question is, how much silver metal will be created? Well, first thing we need to do is set up a BCA table for this problem, and as we've talked about in the past, the first step of any BCA table is to write the balanced chemical equation. So for this reaction, we start with silver nitrate, and copper and since it's a single replacement reaction we're going to end up with silver as one of our products and then the copper nitrate this is not going to be copper one nitrate it actually works out to be copper two nitrate so CuNO32 And then we need to balance that reaction. And in order to balance it, we're going to need two of the silver nitrates and two silvers. And then we have one copper and one copper two nitrate. OK, so we start there. But now when we look at the problem, we're given two amounts, 10 grams of silver nitrate and 10 grams of copper. Well, those are both reactants, and before we do anything else, the next step, of course, is to fill in the before line. And since we have an amount for both of our reactants, we're going to want to plug both of those values in for the before line for our BCA table. And so we do that the same way that we've been practicing. If we have 10 grams of silver nitrate. We're going to want to divide by the molar mass of silver nitrate, which if you use your periodic table, we take one atom of silver, which is 107.87 grams per mole, add that to one nitrogen, which is 14.01 grams per mole, and three oxygens at 16 apiece, we end up with a molar mass of 169.81 grams. So 10.0 grams, I forgot the point zero on there, uh, times one mole of silver nitrate divided by 169.81 grams into three sig figs, we get 0 0.0589 moles AgNO3. So I'm going to put that in my BCA table for my before. And then I'm going to do the same thing with copper. 10.0 grams of copper times one mole of copper is 63.55 grams. And that gives me 0 0.157 moles of copper. And so that goes into my table as well. And then, of course, zero for my products. 
Okay, well, this is different than what we have done in the past, where we only had one value at the start, but now we have multiple values, and so the question is, what do we do from here? So how do we proceed? Well, let's think about what we know. We know how many moles of each reactant we have. So we have 0 0.0589 moles of silver nitrate and 0 0.157 moles of copper metal. We know in what proportions these reactants will react. We know from the balanced chemical equation that for every two moles of silver nitrate that react, we use one mole of copper. That's part of the balanced chemical equation. And then three, we know that if one of the reactants gets used up, the reaction will stop. Okay, we've talked about that in the past. In order for the reaction to proceed, we have to have the proper amounts of each reactant. And if one of them gets used up, so it's no longer present, then there is no more chemical reaction. So based upon that, we need to figure out which of the reactants is going to be used up first. Well, that's one of the nice things about the BCA table, is that we can really try anything we want to, and if we make a mistake, it's going to let us know right away. So when we've done this in the past, we've taken one of the substances, and in this case, I'm going to pick copper, and we're going to have that completely react, leaving us with none left over. Well, then to figure out how much of the silver nitrate we would use, we need to use the mole ratio. So I'm just going to erase this right here so we can take a look at this. So we have 0 0.157 moles of copper. And the mole ratio of silver nitrate to copper is 2 to 1. And so if I calculate that, 0.157 times 2 moles of silver nitrate divided by 1 mole of copper metal, I get 0 0.314 moles of AgNO3. If I now plug that into my BCA table, what do I get for my after? 0 0.0589 minus 0.314. And I get negative 0 0.255 moles. Well, what does that mean? That means that if I were running this reaction and completely reacting the copper metal, then in order for that reaction to take place, I would need 0 0.341, 0 0.314 moles of silver nitrate, but I didn't have that much. And so when I take what I actually had to work with, which is the 0 0.0589 moles, and subtract off what I needed, I end up with a negative amount of substance. That essentially means that I have negative mass, and I can't have negative mass. What that tells me about this is that I chose the wrong thing. I chose the wrong thing that is going to be being completely used up in this reaction. This can't happen. If the after line here ends up with a negative value, that means that that is wrong. That means that that is wrong. I need to instead look at the reaction with all the silver nitrate being completely reacted. So let's reset this question and go from there. So a balanced chemical equation, I'll just rewrite it here, 2 AgNO3 plus 1 copper yields 2 Ag and 1 CuNO3, 2. And I started with 0 0.0589 moles here and 0 0.15 seven moles, zero and zero. All right, well this time we're going to use the silver nitrate as our starting spot. Have that completely go to zero. 
Now let's see what we get. 0 0.0589 moles of AgNO3 times 1 mole of Cu over 2 moles of AgNO3. And so how much copper metal is required to completely react all of that? 0 0.0589 times one mole of copper divided by two moles of silver nitrate and I get 0 0.0295 moles of copper. So if I put that number in here, 0.157 minus 0 0.0295 and I have 0 0.128 moles of copper left over. Notice that that value for copper is positive. I had 0 0.157 moles of copper. I only used 0 0.0295 and so I have 0 0.128 moles left. That means that copper was our excess reactant. Copper is the excess reactant because it's left over. We have an excess of it. Silver nitrate, because it completely was used up and stops the reaction, that's called the limiting reactant. It limits how much reaction can take place. So now that I've just figured out which of my two products was the limiting reactant and which one of the two products was the excess reactant, I can then finish the rest of the question. Because I know that these two amounts, the 0 0.0589 and the 0 0.0295, that those amounts work for this reaction. I don't have any negative mass or negative moles left over. This is where I want to go. The limiting reactant is the thing that goes to zero. The excess reactant is the one that we have excess of, leftover of. Just make sure that when you're solving a question like this, where you have two amounts that you're starting with, that you figure out which one you need to work with. If you do this first part, like we saw in this example here, we should not get a negative value. If you get a negative number for the after line, that means that you have the wrong one going to zero. Like here we had copper going to zero. Okay, That doesn't work. We can't completely react the copper because there's not enough of the silver nitrate, so we had to start the problem over again. Okay. So now that we have that, because of the way things balance out, I know that I'm making 0 0.0589 moles of silver and 0 0.0295 moles of the copper nitrate. So 0 0.0589 moles and 0 0.0295 moles and the question asked me the mass of silver that would be being produced so there's the moles of silver produced 0 0.0589 moles of silver times 106 point nope 107 excuse me the molar mass of silver is 107.87 grams over moles. And if we grab my calculator here, 0 0.0589 times 107.87, 6.35 grams of silver. So there we go. Limiting and excess reactants. Just remember that we still do the same process that we were doing before. If we have masses, we need to convert them to moles. We put everything into the table where it belongs to start with. If we have two starting amounts like we did in this question, where we started with that many moles of silver nitrate and that many moles of copper, we need to figure out which one goes to zero, which one is our true limiting reactant. And then the excess reactant, we should have a positive amount of that left over. If you end up with a negative amount, that means you have the wrong thing going to zero and you need to switch the process like we did here. Okay, so that's it. Those are your notes. Uh, there is an assignment for you to work on, so please get started on that. It should be posted to Edmodo.